I'm Sean McMillan. This is my co-host, Richard Morrow. McMillan and Morrow, people. <laughs> We're back for more. Thank you for tuning in. It's always good to have you. Thank you. Sit down. Get comfortable. Get that. Turn the volume up on that screen because we're about to hear about some things that will probably what? Ain't no telling. We get a lot of emotions out of people in this one. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's gonna be a ride. Thank you for being a part of it, Rich. Let's let's kick us off, man. Oh, so we're gonna stay in America to start the. Stories off today. Yeah, no, overseas has been a little crazy these last few episodes. Um, so did you know that they were calling last year the Great Resignation? Yes. You did? I did. So I didn't know that they gave it an actual name. So they're saying that according to CNBC, 80% of workers who quit in the Great Resignation have regrets, according to a new survey. Yeah, because the dummies quit without getting a job. <laughs> Do you know how many people quit their jobs? It's like millions. Over 50 million. Yeah. And roughly 47 million quit the year before. And, um, you know, they were citing higher pay and better work conditions, which I'm all for. But um, now new study is finding it. They're calling it now the great regret. <laughs> yeah. Because this is what happens when you take something too far. Yeah. You know, we were in the pandemic. <clears throat> people thought that pandemic conditions and mm -hmm. not just with, the, with respect to the virus, but work would last forever. Yeah. And so the, the allowances and the liberties people took, they thought that they were entitled to. Yeah. And that's what happens when you go too far. You quit your job without actually having another job. You got to have something. Right? Yeah. You know, and, and, and everybody thought if I just put a green screen behind me, <laughs> I'll be I, good. I can convince YouTube to pay me. And I'll make millions of dollars. If only it was so simple. Now, now, now they want to go back to work because they need a job. Yeah. So, and it's like, I don't know if they want to go back to work. They just want to get paid. They want to be able to make money. <laughs> well, I mean, it's only a... <laughs> it ain't got to be a regular job. They just want to find ways and be able to make money without having to feel yeah, like they're working. But isn't it the case that any way that you make money is work? I guess. And nobody's giving you money for free. And some, I guess, yeah, it should still be considered work. But a lot of people want to get paid to just live their lives nowadays. You got people that blog. Well, I guess you could still consider That's them. work. Still work. You got to yeah. write that blog. You got to yeah. video that blog. It's all work. Yeah, still let, let work. Me, let me help your generation out. Yeah. That's yeah. not my gen. Gen Z is below my yeah, generation, it's, it's by you, the way. It's you and Aaron over there. No, no. They're both generations generation lower. You don't get to avoid work. Yeah. You got to work. Yeah. And instead of l resenting it, why don't you fall in love with the fact that you get to be productive? Do it, something that you love to but do. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me finish. Yeah. It's not just about doing something you want to do. I think that's important. But it's also about the fact that laying around all day doesn't make you feel good. Yeah, it doesn't. Doing nothing for days and days and weeks and months at a time doesn't add to your quality of life. Yeah. Now, a good month of that will feel great. <laughs> Every now and then. Right? A, a good month of just laying in the bed, waking up at 11. Yeah. But after a while, your greatness agitates you. Yeah. After a while, your giftedness will start messing with you and saying, shouldn't we be building something? Shouldn't we be doing something? Shouldn't we be writing something? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for real, something. If, if, if you are great, after about a month of doing nothing, your greatness is going to tap you on the shoulder and say, what's wrong? Yeah. And so my thing is, with your little generation, stop trying to avoid work. <laughs> Learn how to love it. Yeah. Either you work for yourself, but work. Yeah. Work for your mama, but work. Do something, as you just said, that you love that doesn't feel like work. Yeah. But work. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's always... And I tell everybody that, you know, especially in entertainment, I'm like, it's always going to come down to the work. No matter what way you want to put it, no matter how talented you are, no matter how good looking you are, it's always going to come down to the work. I don't care who you are. Even the most talented and gifted people in the world that we know about are in the positions they're in because they worked. Nobody's getting glorified on the highest level without putting work in. Period. Can't be Beyonce without work. Okay? You feel me? I'm, I'm, you just can't. You can't be at that level. And the crazy thing is, though, is that I think that 
part of the reason why Gen Z, and they're saying that, you know, a lot of things are happening as a result, such as mental health being on the decline, you know, work-life balance, work-life relationships, all of that has suffered, of course. Uh, but I think one of the things that led to a lot of it is that people don't, they don't show the balance and everything. It's so much easier to obviously just show the highlights of your life, to show the highlights of things going on. When things are positive and great, nobody's rushing to publicize the negative things going on in their lives nearly as much. And it's not to say that it's a should thing or a shame thing where, you know, they should do one thing or should do the other. But I think it led a lot of younger, you know, individuals to thinking that things are just easier than they actually are when it comes to the amount of work that you have to put in to achieve certain you know, freedoms and it's 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 a sad situation, but I think a lot of people have been led, you know, astray and now they're <laughs> trying to fend for themselves. But unless you got that work ethic, it ain't just gonna come to you. Nobody's just handing out life changing opportunities. I know a bunch of twenty year olds who think they should be rich and famous because they're twenty. Yeah. And it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. There's a small percentage of 20 year olds that really are. And the crazy thing is, a lot of the but ones they, they think work. are, and they work. They work. I mean, I mean, I'm not begrudging somebody 20 being rich and famous. Of course not. I'm all for it. Of course. But not. it just doesn't happen cause just because you fell out your mama's womb. <laughs> <laughs> You're laying in the crib. I, I deserve it because I'm here. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It does not work that way. I wish people would stop acting as if. The way life has functioned for 2,000 years is supposed yeah. to stop functioning that way because y'all showed up. I mean, come on. Let's let's go to another story. I get upset. Yeah, no, I feel you, though. I mean. Who is this person running into our podcast? In case you were wondering, we finally Tyler. got a visual on Tyler. I call him Jake. We had a Tyler sighting. <laughs> yeah. His I, name's Tyler, but we call him Jake. I call him Jake. <laughs> Shout out to the real Jake. <laughs> So moving forward, um, according to Fortune, <clears throat> they're now saying that you need to detach and psychologically recover from work. Professors have been studying this and say that commuting is a liminal space where that can happen. Do you know what liminal space is? Tell me. Liminal space is that in-between time between other tasks and priorities that you have. That's what I figured it was. Yeah. What liminal means. I so, wasn't sure how they were applying it to space. Um, okay. Well, so what are they saying? We need to we need to detach, and we need to take advantage of that time that we have in between the priorities and you know tasks that we have to, to have to achieve, and um, provides us an opportunity to mentally switch gears um, to home. Most Americans who commute, um, you know, the trip from their office or to their job is usually one full hour a day about 25 minutes each way. And um, some people spend up to obviously over like two hours on the road, which is about 7%. But um, with the pandemic reducing and changing job requirements and circumstances, um, we found out that a lot of people are actually missing the commute because it's some time that we were used to having our alone time and our recovery and you know being able to a lot of time, well, not if you're in New York, I mean, that's different. <laughs> But in other cities where you may have that alone time and that seclusion of that period where you're going in between tasks, that's been taken away from a lot of people that work at home and, you know, do different things differently. You know what this is, this is a wonderful example of? Be careful what you ask for. Yeah, for sure. It's like people are having trouble switching gears, they're saying, from one to the other because no, they don't have that period. People wanted to work from home. People wanted it to be easier and more convenient. By the way, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But nothing comes without its own built-in cost. It's a yeah. sacrifice. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me give you this. Never forget this. Never forget this. I feel like a good one coming. In order to have something precious, something sacred must be sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Period. So if you're going to gain something that is of value to you, you are going to lose something. That's a value. Yeah. That is also of value to you. Mm. Right? Yeah. You don't you don't get the kingdom without putting something on the altar. 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we wanted to work at home. We wanted it to be more convenient, but we've lost liminal space. Yeah. We've lost liminal time, the time mm. we need to refresh. Yeah. Now the question isn't, it isn't to lament that, but to figure out how can we take what we've lost and replace it with something that's not the same thing, but be intentional about replacing it with something that gives us some of the same benefits. And they offer some alternatives. See? Like giving how did I walk. know? Yeah. How did I know? Like this is what I do for a living. Yeah, people. like having a walk, you know, at the beginning or the end Replacing of your day. It Fifteen with minute that give walk. You yes. Um you know, I think there's all kinds of things that you can do, but I think a lot of it should involve probably situations where it does require you to be secluded and alone. I think rechar- part of recharging for me personally, being an only child, I enjoy my alone time. And I feel like I need that after my social meter, as I say, expires. <laughs> I think my social meter expires quicker than other times, you know, depending on the environment that I'm in. But I know that feeling when it's like, all right, it's time for me to take my butt home because I'm sick of being around people. And it's something that I can't even do. Why do you think we get along? I think we, I think we share a lot of the same perspectives on things. Um, I'm not saying everything, contrary to belief. We actually do agree on a lot of things too, guys. But um, I think, I think it's just a mindset. I think we have an appreciation for each other as just people, you know? It's a good you question. Think so? I do. I appreciate you. I know you do, and I appreciate yeah. you likewise. But <laughs> but, but okay. <laughs> but I don't think that's why we get along. Why do you think we get along? Because you don't get along with everybody. Mm, true. <laughs> that is true. I don't get along with most people. But I kind of do. I get along with most people, though. That's why I'm asking. We're so different. <laughs> you, you walk in a room and it's blah, 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 and everybody will love you. I walk in a room and think, how long do I have to be here? <laughs> We're very different people. So why do you think we get along then? I'm I'm very interested. It's a in that. great question. I think I think we need to spend the rest of the life of this podcast <laughs> trying to figure it out. Returning to this question. Because, because for those of you watching, like we we're not just like collegial or work together on here. Like we mm-hmm. have known each other for eight or nine years. Yeah. And been very close for eight or nine years. And but very different people, different yeah. worlds, everything, yeah. eat social party, Hollywood. <laughs> I'm read a book, watch a documentary. Don't come over my house, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, you know what I'm saying. That's but, true. but we but we get along. Hmm. Like you don't annoy me. Yeah, and most people do. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't annoy you most of the time. Yeah, I think I do annoy you though sometimes. No, 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 not not genuinely. Not actually. No, 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 no. Like, you, you've never annoyed me genuinely. No, genuinely. Like I've, I've looked at you like, don't do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like now that could get annoyed if you, <laughs> if you continue to do that. Like that, that is on the way to annoy. You're, you're on the yet. path to annoyance. Okay, that but is anyway. interesting though. I'm. Yeah, we'll have to revisit that because that actually is a very good question. It is. It's a very good question. It is a good question. And let me tell you why. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with the story and we can move on. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. One, it doesn't, you know. No. But but it's important to know why you connect with someone. Mm-hmm. It is important to know what is it, what's the secret sauce that makes this work? Because when it stops working, you know what to run back to. That is actually really a good point. Yeah, you, Any yeah. relationships. You have to know what is the thing that makes it magic. So that when it loses part of its luster, Mm -hmm. you're not repairing things that don't matter. That brings up so much for me. Like because it makes me think of how many relationships I have. Do you ever meet, or not even meet, but do you ever have people in your life that have been in your life so long that you damn near forgot how you met? Yes. And you think to yourself, like, damn, how could I forget? The first time that I, because before that, that person was not in your life at all. You know what I mean? But yeah. to be able to forget such a significant event makes me realize how easy it is for us to forget why we actually have people in our lives, too. Because we don't sit and really dwell on that unless you're a very insightful, self-aware person that's working on themselves and reflecting constantly. I don't know about you, but... For me, most of my life, I didn't do a lot of reflecting until things really forced me to have to reflect on certain things. Well, you and a lot of other people. Yeah, that's so. That's and that's and that's partly why things happen. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're doing a lot in this conversation. No, that's, we are. That's probably why things things happen to make us yeah, reflect, reflect and think and grow. 
Mm. So we, we, we lament the bad stuff, the struggle, the difficulty. Yeah. But some of it has been sent into your life for the intentional purpose of making you think about yourself at a different level. I love that. Yes. I so, love that. So, I hope y'all are taking this in, by the way. So we say thank you. We yeah. say thank you for it all. Thank you for it thank all. Thank you that you hired me. Thank you that you fired me. Yeah. Thank you that I got the relationship. Thank you mm -hmm. that I lost the relationship because all of it sort of comes together to do what it does. But the magic of a relationship needs to be studied. People yeah. need to know why we get along. Mm -hmm. What makes this work? It can't just be unspoken. Because when you get in trouble, you need words. And you know what's crazy? When you go to, say, a counseling or... I'm going to use marriage counseling as an example. I haven't been married before, but I know just from, you know, experience of people who have, watching different things about it, learning, that that's one of the things they focus on is trying to find why did you two get married in the first place? And you it's look at question. friendships and things like it's that, and we never, we never really have those same dialogues or thought processes with friends of ours and family members and, you know, whoever. But it's so important when you think about it and you actually break it down like that because it's like, wow, that is the very basis of if anything were to go astray that you could always go back to to understand why this was even... Yeah, what makes it work? Working in the first place. Yeah. Wow. See, I love that. We've, we've been dropping some gems lately. I really hope y'all picking up what we putting down over here, y'all. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to the audience. Oh. <laughs> You forget we got people watching us. I forget I'm on TV. I, I, I totally forget this is a show. Yeah, forget about y'all. Don't don't be. No, I'm just playing. Okay. You ready for this? I don't know. I never know <laughs> what you're gonna give me and bring to the table. I brace myself in advance. That's a good, that's a good idea. Um, you know, we're going to start actually in your hometown, New York, New York City. New York, all right. Yes, sir. Oh, wait, wait, let's pause. Applause from New York City, people. <laughs> we love it. Shout out to New York. So I'm curious to know if you've heard about this. Um, according to PIX11, the No Pants subway ride has been canceled again. Do you know what the No Pants subway ride is? No, what is that? You haven't heard about it. Okay, so... Believe it or not, after occurring 19 years in a row, so this is since 2002, it was halted during the pandemic and is yet to resume again. So um, it's basically an event where people ride the various trains on the subway in the middle of winter with no pants. These are white people? Because <laughs> I, I can't see any black people doing this. Y'all know I'm not racist. I love all of God's children. But, but oh no no no! Before you go further, I'm not going to say anything. I'm trying to catch my breath. We have in the world we have white people mess, <laughs> yes. and we have black people mess. I got a list. Hold on. Okay. White people hear a sound. Mm -hmm. They want to go they check go it out. It. Yeah yeah yeah. We don't do that. No. No. Here's what we do. Black people mess. We talk to the movie. Like people can hear. Them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The movie going on. Black people are, don't do that. They can't hear Don't me. go over there. So when I say this is white people mess, you, you, it feels I that. acknowledge the mess of all communities. Mm -hmm. This is definitely white people mess. <laughs> okay, well, it says only half, seven half-naked people participated in the first one that happened in 2002, right? Okay. Since then, there's been approximately over 2,000 New Yorkers that have undressed for the winter event. So I don't know. Out of 2,000, you think all of them are white? I don't know. The overwhelming majority. <laughs> the over I have no doubt I will bet all the money in my pocket yeah. against all the money in your pocket so you think 100% 90% 90 and the, and I don't know if I'd take that bet and the black ones are black people who grew up around white people <laughs> <laughs> or somewhere cold where they just no, nah, you, no, yeah, yeah, no listen, I can't even sell that you're you, right you're from Cleveland I am right I'm from Brooklyn mm -hmm. also Queens also Harlem I lived all, all yeah. over Nobody I know is getting on the damn train with no pants on. Okay, so that's that leads you to my question. Which is what? So since you're from New York, mm -hmm. if you were waiting for the train and you were on your way, say to shoot this. Yeah. And the train pulled up and it was full of half-naked people, would you get on it? Depends on how they look. That's a good answer. I um, mean, if you're sexy, <laughs> I want to be in the train. Okay? Okay. 
So would you feel out of place then once you got on the train and feel like, all right, no, I gotta take my pants no. off too? Are you high? I'm just asking, are you gonna have to wait, take wait, your do pants you off? Did you ask me that? Would I feel like I wanna take my pants off? Do you would you feel obligated to okay. once you got on the train? Let, let me let me let me let me lay this I out. See for this. You. I'm not as sexy as you are. Okay. All right, you a good looking guy. Okay. I take my pants off, it's gonna be a different reaction. <laughs> okay? I, I listen, no, I'm not taking my pants off. That's never happening. I can't no. That's not happening. Did but you, what if everybody, there's so many probably different types of people that are already on there, you wouldn't feel just comfortable say, with Say what right? you want to say, different body. I'm just saying, yeah, different body types. Um, so you wouldn't have to be self-conscious about that if everybody's already doing it. What kind of logic is that? It's New York. No, let's go through, let's go through that sentence structure. <laughs> you wouldn't have to be self-conscious about it if everybody's doing it. I mean, you wouldn't be alone. What? You wouldn't be alone so in the it. The only reason people are self-conscious is if they happen to be alone. Look, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it could be one of the reasons that people become self-conscious. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying, Mauro. Okay. I'm not taking my damn pants off on the train. <laughs> it's not happening. Okay. That's all now, you have I to say. I will get on the train if there's some good-looking, half-naked people. Okay. But you're going to sit there fully clothed the whole yes. time? Yes. Okay. I don't, don't know. No, 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 no. And, and not just for aesthetic reasons. I just, I'm not into... Yeah, I feel you. you you're know, not a nudist. I'm not, no. Are you, are, okay. Would you... Take I mean, I'm a off. model too, so it it kind of comes with my job. Sometimes I have to deal with it, an actor as well. So I don't really think about it. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm not ashamed of my body. I'm proud of it. If I had that body, I'd be proud of it too. <laughs> uh, that's that's not a stretch, by the way. But what, you didn't answer the question. You're so really what's good the at question? that. If you got on the train, <laughs> if you got on the train. Uh huh. And they was half naked people on there. Okay. Would you feel the urge to sort of reveal your packages? I would have to say the same thing as you initially. It depends on how they looked if I'm getting on a train at all. But if they pass the look test, um, I may have a good time when I get on. It's Take not an answer to off, the question. You know? Yes, might, you would. Or no I might would. join them. Yeah. Why not? I couldn't be the only one fully clothed because I feel like I would get pressured to take my pants off if I was the only one with pants on. Let me give you some advice, okay? Not that peer pressure runs my life or anything. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's what we're discovering. I just told you I'm comfortable with my body Can though, so it's advice? like, let's have a party. Can I give you some advice? Okay, go ahead. A, mm -hmm. keep your damn pants on. <laughs> okay. Okay, and B, just because the whole world is doing it. Don't mean I should. Can I, I complete my own sentence? You're right, I just, it was my mom talking to me, she used to tell me that growing up. Just, just because, let me look at the camera. Just because somebody's doing something does not mean that it's good for your life. People can be engaged in all kinds of behavior and ways of being in the world. And just because they surround you does not mean it's a le legitimate reason for you to in indulge or to engage. I agree with that. Yeah, I, I know you do, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I was going to say like 90 something percent of the time. You know, there's times where sometimes no, you just got to have fun. I'm 100% of the time. Sometimes you just got to have fun, you know? No, ain't that much damn fun in the <laughs> What world. if it aligns with something that you've maybe deep down been like, maybe I would do that, you know, if the opportunity presented itself and now this is one of those opportunities. Then it's not really not thinking for yourself. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to take advantage of this opportunity. Well, if that were the case, you wouldn't need to be in a train full of naked people to have done it, right? You just haven't had the opportunity where enough people have been every, doing it with you for you to get away with it. That, that, <laughs> but you just proved my point. Every, right. every time you get on the train, you could do it. You're only doing it now because other people are doing it. it. Hey. And I'm saying, be an individual. You're right. Think for yourself. Okay. Decide on your own terms. So that brings me, and then we can wrap this up. Funny point. So what if one only one person hopped on the train? with no pants on. How do you think that would go? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just... I'm laughing at just thinking about this scenario with you in it. You would definitely judge them and say something. Wow, you think I judge people? You would judge somebody that got on the subway without pants on in the winter. By in themselves. New York, I would probably not even notice. <laughs> See? <laughs> in New York, I wouldn't even notice that they were in the world. See, that's the problem with New York right there. Wow. It is though. Well, it's, we mind our business. <laughs> Unless it unless it intrudes into our space and our life, yeah, we really like don't care. Around. If one person got on the train with no pants on, I would depends on how they look. Truth be told, nobody probably would say anything. I believe too. In New York, nobody yeah. would say anything. Yeah, I know. As long as you don't pee on anybody, <laughs> <Yeah>. or <laughs> on the train, or sit on somebody's lap, 
No one cares. That's so true, though. You really started out with an interesting little story. It was an interesting one, wasn't it? Yeah. But I kind of <laughs> want to come back to you not wearing pants. <laughs> well, we could talk about that on this next story because it has something to do because with Because of peer pressure. Yeah, right. No. We're going to go over to Oxford. Um, did you know that they do a word of the year every year? First of all, I've been to Oxford University. Yeah? Did you know they do a word of the year? Yes. You did? Yes. I was really surprised to hear that that was a thing, but... Can you guess what the word of the year this year was? Um, no. Go, just give it to me. Which is kind of funny now that I think about it, too, because it's more than one word, so I don't know how that works either. The winning word this year was goblin mode. Goblin mode. Yes. Can you have any idea? Do you have any idea what that could possibly mean? It sounds like some something somebody from your generation came up with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because that, that, my generation, we're not sitting around coming up with dumb things like goblin <laughs> mode. I mean, we messed up the planet, but we're not doing goblin mode. You guys are just being goblins instead of... All right. So, the term is a slang Wait, term. Wait, you just call me a goblin? No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Okay. But, listen... It's a slang term that's used. And I'm honestly surprised that this is the word of the year, first of all, because I've never even heard it before until now. But, but two... Um, it's so popular, you've never heard of it. I'm like, wow. And the fact that it won by a landslide, I'm talking about 93% of the total was this. And the other, uh, what is it? I think it was, can't tell the percentage, but there was 14,000 votes for Metaverse in second place, which... I feel like it would be a lot more relevant than goblin mode. But it means, goblin mode is a slang term that unapologetically means being, you know, your lazy or greedy self or, you know. It's being a bum. Not just being a bum. It's almost like being a reckless, wild bum. You what, know? What is a reckless, wild bum? Where just anything goes. You're in goblin mode. No, you know? I've never heard of this. And I, wait, Oxford University? This is Oxford we're talking about. The Oxford. This is, why, this is according to BBC. This is why you should go to Harvard. <laughs> this is why you, this sounds like something Yale and Oxford would come up with, okay? I've heard terms like beast mode, you know, in sports. Um, so so it means it means being recklessly lazy and bummy. And greedy. And, and greedy. Mm -hmm. And that equates to being a goblin. Yeah, I mean, there's another term that goes around in America called demon time. I don't know if you've heard that. No, I'm, people refer to it as like after listen, dark man, hours no, I, I and can't, things demon. like that. But see, uh, see, this is the devil. <laughs> Goblins and demons is of the devil. Y'all need to stop this, okay? See, I, I, hey. no, I, I don't, I don't, I rebuke all of this. All of this, I rebuke. Okay. Well, I, got, I got to take spiritual authority. Today. You, you might need it in today's day and age, though. I'm not gonna lie, and. As COVID restrictions, you know, started to ease up, the term continued to grow as people realized that they didn't want to go back to the way of life that they were living before. So they invented this term, goblin mode, where it's like, you know what? Forget that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna live in goblin mode. <laughs> this new generation, man. Let's listen. <laughs> Here's the wisdom. You ready? Yep. Just because you call it something else. <laughs> does it mean that the content of the thing they're in is any different, okay? I agree. You guys are not so special and wonderful. I'm talking about your generation. Not so special and wonderful. I mean, I would like to think that I'm yeah, like okay. in between above this generation. There's one. Yeah, you kind of are. You kind of I'm right above them. You kind of are. Yeah. Okay. The generation that's beneath, a little <laughs> yeah. bit beneath you. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, I'm, I'm all for words. Mm -hmm. You know, I love language, but yeah. it's being a bum. Yeah, I mean, I mean, day. that's what it is. Just because you call it goblin mode doesn't doesn't mean it's any different than what you know people before us called it. You're you know being what's a bum. Scary. Ninety three percent. There's that many people out there that want to be bums. Well, I, I want to be a bum a lot of days too. Don't I? Yeah, I was about to say. Those people act like we don't. We don't have thought days. about that. For, I saw the wheels start turning at the I same like, time. I was like, should I lie? <laughs> Or should I tell the truth? <laughs> Which one will set me free? Oh, that yeah. light bulb went off. Yeah, sure. I was like, well. If we could. Yeah, I'm, I'm not against being a bum. <laughs> I'm just saying you ain't special because you came up with it. I, but I get, you get back to the point, though. Mm -hmm. I, I'm surprised at Oxford. Yeah, me too. That this would be the word of the year. Yeah, a word definitely. that neither of us have heard of. Yeah. You heard of this word, Tyler? 
Okay, that's uh, a, that's enough time. He, he he's too much, right? Feral. <laughs> How many people out there know what feral means? I mean, I've heard it be feral. <laughs> nope, no more throwing to you. <laughs> but it, but 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 here's the point. You know, we come up with things that describe us. For sure. Be careful what you accept as a description. As an identity. For because what you call a thing is what a thing becomes. Mm. And I wouldn't let anybody call me a damn goblin. Yeah. I don't care how much of a bum. I didn't say that, by the way. No, I know you, you didn't. Should, they're no. going to cut that out of the... No, 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 no. I'm, sorry. no I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being pejorative I'm you know, just in your direction. I'm just saying, you know, just be... Just because somebody else came up with the definition doesn't yeah. mean you should try to fit yourself into it. I agree. How about that? Yeah, no. That's... How about that? What camera? How about that? How about that? I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't describe me. I reserve the right to describe myself. I reserve the right to come up with my own labels. And you're never going to see me t telling my boss, I'm in goblin time. My boss would be like, what the Goblin that? mode. Mode. He'd be like, what the Both hell is that? Bad. He'd be like, how about you unemployed? <laughs> <laughs> now, you, now you're in unemployed mode. Right. Jake. Jake's like, you're unemployed. All right, so according to BuzzFeed, especially talking about firing, um, I don't know how to pronounce this either, al Mayadeen. probably not saying that right, but we're going to roll with that. Um, according to them, BuzzFeed is using AI to write its articles now after firing 180 employees. Oh, you know what? And we knew this was coming. Let me, let me talk about this. I'm so <laughs> glad we have this story. Because I said something to someone that is so apropos to this. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Someone was talking to me, what's it called, GPX, whatever? Oh, uh, GPT. GPT. Whatever it is. Chat GPT. Yes. And I mm -hmm. said to someone who wanted to use it to submit whatever they were submitting. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, you can do that, and the article might be adequate, but you'll still be dumb. Yeah, you're not going to get any smarter. <laughs> yeah, and the whole purpose is for you to be smarter. Yeah. You're just using it to cheat. And to, and to avoid a consequence. But that's not what education is for. Yeah. It's for you not to be dumb. It's for you to take that and in. And you're going to be, the, the computer will be smarter, but you're still going to be a numb nut. It's a clutch, for sure. Yeah, I, you know what? I don't need clutches. Yeah. I'm going to write the article myself. Yeah. Now, I understand that, that, you know, you can write. The other thing that with this uh, AI is they get information wrong. It's not always correct. It's not always. And it's mm -hmm. usually not brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's like middle of the road, yeah. um, fair to middling. Some of them do give you different options, though. No, they, they do give. I'm not, I'm not talking about options. I'm oh. talking about, okay. This, so, like, I'm saying, like, as far as, like, like highly intelligent, witty, funny, mm -mm. they give you that. A computer cannot write what Toni Morrison was gonna, is going to write. They try to, though. I actually put into one of them actually. Um, no. So you know I'm writing a you know no. you know I'm writing a show right. No. So I put in the same premise no. of my show to no. see what it would come up with. No, no, I'm, and I'm no. definitely I'm, I'm in Until support. Until you of acknowledge you. the no, I'm agreeing with you okay, in what I'm about to say. Because you start saying no, so that, that laptop, out. that that iPad can give me Tony Morrison. <laughs> that's when you talk about being annoying. That we on the road to that. I'm not saying that. Okay, no, what I'm saying, saying is. That. I, mean, I, I can hear you now. I gave it all of the same ingredients of a story that I created myself to see what it would interpret, you know, itself. Mm -hmm. And when reading it, you could kind of feel that it wasn't coming from a human, if that makes sense. Yes, because it's not. But, but I feel like it could fool a lot of people. A lot of dumb people. Yeah. Yeah. I could see it fooling people because I'm like, I see what it did here, but it's amazing to me just how quickly it does. So for quick tasks and things that like a resume or yeah. something like that, I think it's great. Listen, you know, coming up with sort of basic sort of things, absolutely. But but I th I think this whole AI thing with respect to writing, mm -hmm. particularly exposes how dumb the culture has become. Yeah. People just don't even want to do that anymore. And Mm -mm. It's it's literally an expression of your thinking on paper. <laughs> a computer cannot write a, write a better sentence than me. Yeah, it's just not possible. Yeah.
No, it's just it's not. It's not. Computer gonna hasn't breathed people in and really had life experiences to know. I know the music of language. Exactly the music of language. I know the melodies. Mm -hmm. I know where to put the notes. A computer can mimic yeah. someone who knows that, but what it's just it's just mimicking. Yeah. It can't it can't yeah. give you it can't give you a Baldwin. Yeah. It can't give you Shakespeare. Yeah. It can mimic Shakespeare. But it ain't gonna be Shakespeare. To Shakespeare. be or not to be. <laughs> that is not a question. This is the question. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff of the actual big misfortune. Ah, come on here. Who knows if that sleepless night may come? I mean, come on. Yeah. You really can't do that. Mm. It just can't. Tony Morrison, end of Song of Solomon. And she was love. <laughs> Woo! Can't do that. Come on, man. Because only humans can know what are really going to make humans feel what it feels. A computer will never know what it feels like to be human. Therefore, it won't know the beats and tones that will really, just like when I'm reading a script, you know, I can see certain lines on the page where I'm like, that's going to be in the trailer. Why? Because I know people and I know that that's what they're going to focus on in this, mm -hmm. on this page and in this, you know, scene, because that was, that was it. Yeah. But, you know, on paper, you could just be looking at it like, all right, it's just a sentence like all the other ones. It's like, no, I know because I've watched a million trailers, you know, I've been a part of projects that have had trailers and I know what people are going <clears> to <throat> feel when they see a certain you yeah. know, situation. I totally and a agree with can that. never duplicate that. So I totally I, agree with that. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Man. I think it's crazy um, how accessible all of this is now. Um, just not too long ago, I feel like people were talking about these things being possibilities and now they're here. I think that is kind of kind of cool in a way, but I think that there's a thin line between allowing it to be something that we're relying on that could lead to our downfall and becoming dumber as a you know species. Oh, we're already there. <laughs> versus already there. Um, actually allowing it to teach us mm -hmm. because I think it could be used effectively if you use it the right way. It can be used, I think, for basic generic sort of stuff. People ask it questions. Did you hear one past the MCAT and one past uh, the bar and a bunch of different tests now? So they're trying to see if, uh, well, if it, I, I would expect it to be able to pass a test. Yeah, because those answers are yeah, they're yeah, by structured yeah. by facts. It's structured by facts that it can yeah. it can aggregate and pull and, and yeah, find. That is a good point. That, that's not hard to do. Yeah, but but how about uh, exactly? It's like open book is in. Yeah, but try this: the laws of nature. Yeah, and of nature's God. Yeah. We hold these truths <laughs> Ooh, to be self-evident. <laughs> to be so That all men are created. I mean, that's, I mean, you Tom can't. Jefferson was a mess, but that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? The laws of nature and of nature's God. Yeah. I'm done. Even scientists I'm had done. some no, great. I, I need a cigarette. <laughs> it's so funny, though, because you're right. In almost every field, like music, even science, scientists had ways of wording things that to this day still are laws and theories that we recite that were just beautifully put where you couldn't explain it any better than that human did because they get it. We're not all facts. Yeah, I got you. We are, we are as transcendent yeah. as we are bound to the terrestrial. Yeah. Uh, as complex as that is, I actually get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually impressed with myself. That I, was like, able to I, touch. I understand what he's saying. I had to breathe that in for a second. I'm like, yeah, man. But that that it's a crazy time we're living in, man. It really is. But let's move on. Next story. Is that I thought that that was wind outside. Whew. Either that was a scare me for a minute. Are <laughs> you over there praying? What are you doing? There? The mighty so, Russian wind. So we're going to Georgia. Let's take it to the south. Um, According to NBC News, <clears throat> some podcasters uncovered some new evidence that was unearthed in a trial that took place 25 years ago. So a man was wrongfully imprisoned 25 years ago. Is this some... a Mead, um, what's his name? <clears throat> no, I think this is a different story. <clears throat> but yeah, but this was about two teenagers in 1998. <clears throat> who went on trial um, for the shooting death of their friend, which occurred while they were playing a game of Russian roulette at a party. <laughs> well, that was the first mistake. Right. And while present in the room and having provided the weapon, they were facing charges of involuntary manslaughter, <clears throat> which is a 10-year sentence. Um, they moved 
uh, by the urging of the parents, you know, of the kid who died. So, mm -hmm. of course, the parents want justice. But they argued that, you know, the two teens conspired to kill the victim in an act of revenge, which eventually landed them in jail for murder. Um, after 25 years, um, they were freed because some podcasters and their attorneys unearthed some new evidence and it proved their innocence. And this is like a podcast that I don't think had anything to do with, you know, the two kids. I don't think they were in relation with these people. But, you know, there's kind of there's people out there that are obsessed with all kinds of stories and yeah. things. So and I love a good crime. Yeah. So they really were like, we're going to find something that doesn't smell right here. And they were like, you know, Scooby Doo with his crew. And they figured out what was going on and got some attorneys. And um, it led to them and the police finding key witnesses that could give, um, you know, their testimonies and found out that some things weren't adding up. They conducted a proper autopsy after that. All of this led through the podcast and them doing the research on their own to help these innocent people. Well, it makes us feel like our podcast isn't adding much to the I world. know, they freeing people. Yeah, setting people free. <laughs> That's not true. We help people. Think yeah. Better. Don't you think? Yeah, and they've already spent more than half of their lives in prison, so that's a huge blessing. I don't, there's a lot about the story I don't understand. I don't understand mm -hmm. how we got from Russian roulette. Well, the two kids that, that were so the two kids that were imprisoned were a part of a situation where a friend of theirs that they were in the room with, who they gave the weapon to, ended up shooting himself playing Russian roulette. So the charge that the family is making it that. The people that gave the one that died the gun, mm -hmm. they knew that it was a what? Yeah, that they had something that they were plotting revenge on him, and that so they, they put knew like three bullets in. That's there? what I'm saying, okay. and okay. they each got ten years. So because you well, know, they probably you couldn't pin it on exactly, and that's the that's the terrible part about it, and probably why they were end up you know ended up getting free. But you got to remember, this was in Georgia too, so ain't no telling what part of Georgia they were in. Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. Let's get racial. Were they black or white? You know? um, it doesn't say, but... They were white um, kids? Oh, okay. Oh, see, you never know. Well, there it is. But to spend 25 years in prison for it is... That's probably why they got out, because they white. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. Totally kidding, people. It was a joke. Okay, it was a joke. We're going to cut that part out. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, I said it. <laughs> but yeah, man, um, isn't that crazy? Um, they found that the police actually coerced key witnesses to give false testimonies, and that These they are white kids. Now I'm glad I asked the question. Mm -hmm. The police coercing key kids witnesses to give, to give false, false testimony, testimony against some other white kids. Just some other white kids. Mm -hmm. Just goes to show you. You know, that policing in America will eventually affect us all. Yeah. You know, I, be, I, I bet the family of the kids that went in jail have a different perspective about changing policing in America now. Yeah, no. It, you know? Yeah. I, be, I, I bet, I bet y'all will join a little march now, you know? <laughs> Before you were like, ah, what are those people doing? But when it affects you, you have a very different perspective about it because yeah. it affects you. Yeah, but but let, let me before we move on, um, let me just so I think it's important to say that nobody should be playing Russian roulette. Mm -mm. Okay, with an actual gun. I've actually heard of people that have done that recently through friends of mine, and I'm like, people, people actually do that. I, I just no. I, there's a no. Nah, come on. There's nothing. I value my life too about much. That. What is? You need you need risk that much. Go jump out of a plane, then. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, no, don't do that either. Hey. Okay, people don't listen to Rich right now. Apparently listen to it's me. Safer than Russian roulette. How about how about you go build something important if you need risk? <laughs> go do something significant with your life. Go feed somebody. Go <laughs> walk through South Central. Wow. <laughs> That's risky. Wow, we need to clean at this night, part up. At night. Okay? <laughs> Did you just like, say that? You he want risk. That, okay? You Go want the thrill. You safe. want some thrill. That'll be thrilling. you find out real quick. People I, are nuts. I saved you from the PETA people. <laughs> I saved you from the R. Kelly people. Now I got to save you from the... From our people. <laughs> <laughs> I got to save you from the black people now. No, they know they ain't walking around South Central at night by themselves neither. And he doubles down. I'm doubling down. Okay. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Look, I ain't walking through Cleveland by myself at night either. 
Let's be real. Some things just take common sense. According to Insider, in 2021, an 11,000-year-old carving was found in Turkey, right? Mm -hmm. And it's now considered the oldest known narrative scene ever found. Okay, So you know how they paint. I get it. Okay. Um, First off, without any context whatsoever, what do you think it may be? What the carving is? Yeah. Hunting? Of like a family, people? You think? Mm -mm. What is it? It's a good guess. It's a man holding his penis while surrounded by leopards. What do you think that means? Ain't got nothing to do with hunting. (laughs) So the old, let's get this straight. The oldest carving, scene carving. Yeah. In the world. That's been found. Is a man holding his Mm -hmm. (laughs) Surrounded by by leopards. And I'll give you the take that researchers gave after you give me your take. Oh, there it is. It's a man holding his penis surrounded by leopards. What a crazy... Is he protecting his penis? I mean, you got leopards walking around. That'd probably be something you'd probably have to worry about. Probably would. I don't know if that would be the first thing I put up on the wall. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about what what to put on the wall. You know what? Put me the other day when I had to... I'm wondering. Grab a penis around the So, 11,000 years ago. I'm trying to think of what time period and what would be going on 11,000 years ago. I don't know, but it's before Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So, would it be dinosaurs? That's the New Stone Age. Okay. It's the Neolithic period. Yeah. Okay, so check this out. Research, researchers state that the carving likely depicts the complex relationship between humans and the natural world, as well as the animal life that surrounded them during their transition into a sedentary lifestyle. I was grabbing you to do that. <laughs> That's a very good question. I mean, I, but I, I bought, apparently, I they're saying the, my penis. They're saying that the relationship is complex. Were involved. What? What did you say? They're saying that the new stone age was when humans transitioned away from migratory hunt gather lifestyles to a settled lifestyle that included farming and domesticated livestock. But okay, whatever. But they need to dis- explain how that connection to the What is the connection between all of the sedentary and the changes in the neo monolithic and the antediluvian times how that relates to the man grabbing his penis? You know, I mean, you see put that on the wall. Do you think it could have to do something with? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know why leopards. It's random. I'm stuck on the leopards penis. holding this pain. I don't know. You were I don't leopards. Know. I don't. Leopards. I was thinking something along the lines of reproduction, but there's no telling what they were doing eleven thousand years ago, yeah, man. Now you're getting nasty. I am, but you really are getting. We're nasty. talking about eleven thousand years ago. They didn't know had, no better. We had sensors. They probably didn't know no better about no. what was going on. Mm-mm. Or maybe he was protecting it because maybe that was something that was going on. Is like uh, leopards out there biting penises off or something. Who knows? You gotta be careful. Is that the last story? Yeah, it should be. <laughs> it, it really needs to be for the sake of our future together. Not our future together. But I but really am curious to know what the audience. audience, what do you think, though, could be a little, like, let's be serious for a second. What do you think? Let's be serious for a second. Okay, yeah, no, let's be serious. Okay, go ahead. What do you, you think? You go first. What do you think in a educated guest type of standpoint the meaning of something like that actually could be. I think. <laughs> what? When they're talking about them finding the connect, the complex relationship between humans and animals. Are you trying to clean up what you just did? I'm not trying to clean it up. I'm thinking maybe it was a sense of protection kind of thing. And, but holding it, you know what? I lost it. I got nothing. You should have came to that conclusion about you know, ago. I thought I thought that I would be able to pull something out, but you no. Know. When you when you went down when you went down into the into the gray area with the leopards, <laughs> that's what you should have said. I ain't got nothing. Cause it's just crazy. No, it's not crazy at all. 
But we gonna end this. I'm a very curious person to know what life was like back 11,000 years ago, though. New Stone Age. What you think? What do you think you would have been doing 11,000 years ago? Hmm? Not sitting here talking to you. Do you think you would have been like one of those migrate types or you would have wanted to settle down in one place? you think you would have just wanted to keep moving? Or you would have stopped and been like, you know what, let's find a place to live. Because that's the time period they said it was in. It's a serious question. I think I would have been the migratory type. I would have wanted to travel. You want to move around? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you got to think about it. Animals and all kinds of stuff would probably be hunting you if you stay in one place too long. Probably dangerous. They probably didn't have weapons like that either. You won't have any shoes either, so. Yeah. You know, like apparently this. probably not clothing either. All right, everybody. <laughs> I do not know what happened at the end of this episode. And although question. I'm culpable, I don't think I'm entirely liable <laughs> for what happened. That last story was quite a, you went into a full breakdown. I mean, it's it's kind of a significant event. There is nothing significant. <laughs> Not about, about the actual story. drawing, but the fact that it's one of the earliest carvings. It's like, what was going on 11,000 years ago if that they were drawing pictures of that, you know? Interesting stuff. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the history of the penis, everybody. So we'll see you next time. Didn't, didn't, you never know what you're going to get, right? So this is what we got. We will be back. When we come back, make sure you join us. We actually just, come back. We, we, we didn't mean to scare you off. <laughs> That's because we didn't scare you off. He did. Bye-bye. I didn't come up with a story.